This one, this track is from Jamie. Um, Jamie, say a little bit about your project. If, is Fauna the, Fauna's the record label that, if I'm gathering correctly, is your own label or a, a label that you've, you're at least a part of? And I got this link and it said, the question for this track is, Hey Kyle, I'm working on the arrangement on this one at the moment, but I feel like the first two minutes of the track are lacking and it doesn't really get going until the two minute mark. I'm hitting a bit of a block here. Also, maybe you could, um, you could demonstrate a few transitional tricks uh, between certain sections as it would also be an area I feel I need to learn more on. Okay. I'm going to try my best and to, I, I'm going to be really honest. What's up, Mo? Drum cells in the building. Daniel's in the building. So I, I've got to say, Jamie, this track's pretty damn good. So let's, let's start with celebrating that aspect of it. Like these are the type of tracks that I love having in my collection when it's where I just feel like the stuff that I maybe normally am playing would totally clear the dance floor. Um, and this is stuff that I feel like is really good stuff that I would play at a warm up set, um, that I'd play in the middle of a long closing set. And just a really good, nice dubby track. Anything, any uh, good news on that front? Still going? Sounds good now. Okay, yeah, just... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, these days you never know if it's part of the track or if it's, uh, if it's bad sound quality or whatever. So uh, there's, you can, there's no limits to distortion on, uh, on tracks. So yeah, good to ask. All right, turn it up a bit. I can do that. Perfect. Are we at a good level? So again, my first instinct, this doesn't need to be here. So let's vote it off the island. Now we're, now we're there. Maybe what we can do is we can say, okay, we can, we can get a little bit of progression here. Where's the clap? So let's just delete that. Let's just delete the clap right there. So you still kind of have this, the beginning of the track, but it's got a little bit more life on it. More please. Okay. Are we good now? Okay, great. So, and, and can you hear me talking whenever I'm talking over the track? Sometimes, sometimes it, with regards to uh, Jamie's track here, he, his question was, for those of you who are just joining in, uh, was he felt like the track didn't start moving 
until about two minutes in. And, and I said, okay, like sometimes it just takes stepping out from the picture. And it sounds like the, the most like generic advice that I could give, but sometimes it's, it's what needed to be heard. And my advice was delete the first two minutes. And now you're already at, things start really coming to life at about a minute and a half now. That would have been, that would have been about three minutes before anything really starts happening. And, and again, this track does, for me, Jamie, this track doesn't need drastic, crazy transitions because I feel like it's, it's, that's not the, that's not the feel of the track in my opinion. What I would like to track down is there's like these, I'm trying to figure out where I'm here in the, maybe you can help me. There's some delays that start kind of un, unraveling. Is it the, is it the chord or where's the, where's the delay that's kind of, maybe it's the hat bus. Okay, maybe it's the perk bus. So that part right there, Jamie, I wanna see that, I, I really wanna see that delay kind of unravel a little bit more and get a little bit loose. So let's, and I think that these are gonna be all audio, finished audio files, so that's, that's not gonna work. But what I'll kinda of do to give you a little idea is I'll just throw a plug in on it and we'll be able to get an idea of it. Moment of truth, the, this is the plugin that was crashing my computer over and over again whenever I installed a new version. So let's, let's fingers crossed. Um, so what I'm hearing here is, oh, maybe I should have it on the right channel and that would help. So let's even start a, let's even have a return track because you were talking about transitions that you were wanting and this could kind of tie into that. So let's insert a return track and instead of having this uh, on the perk bus, I'm gonna move this delay to the return track. But then right here, I'm gonna switch to, I'm gonna automate this. Let's do this. And we're gonna turn up the, we're gonna, the feedback's gonna be really useful on this. And it sounds like that's what you're doing on that, on that track anyway. But I'm also, so it doesn't get really muddy on the feedback. I'm gonna put an, an EQ on the, the back end of this return track. Oh, I love the H delay. That and Echo Boy. Okay, so I'm gonna, whoa, but you gotta be really careful with that. Uh, it can get out of control really quick. Okay, and again, I'm, that's why it's not, I'm like, here I am telling you to do this and I, I'm hearing absolutely nothing and it's because I'm on the wrong damn track. Sorry. Aren't you glad that I'm teaching you all the mistakes?
So that, I mean, I would probably change the, the, the timing of the delay, but let's get, let's get this all going. So that would be an example of like a little, a little trick that you could do for transitions. I don't think that this track needs these like crashing snares or something to like keep the track moving along. I always say, um, I always say there's, there's, a, there's a place for yelling and there's a place for whispering when you're, when you're writing music. And, but it's weird to scream a bedtime story. So keep that in mind whenever you're, whenever you're making tracks, like sometimes like I'll be going through tracks on some live streams and I'll be listening to something like this or playing something like this. And someone's like, it needs more dr dramatic transitions. And you're like, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, uh, I don't know. I think that sometimes tracks can just be kind of these like slow burning things. And yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing all the comments now that uh, people are, it's on the wrong bus, so. Yeah, uh, another thing that I noticed, and, and I don't wanna spend, I've got a few sessions to go on with this, but uh, another thing that I noticed is I'm not sure if this sub kick is necessary. I don't know. I but what I did. So here's what here's what it looked like originally. That's with the sub kick. That's without it and I feel like the transient is actually better when you've just got the 707 and the 606 pre-attack. If you really want that kick to still be somewhat present, what I would recommend doing is just squashing it and get absolutely squash it so there's no transient coming out of it. Kind of funny to have like a kind of a gabber sound laying underneath this really deep melodic track. So that's that's just my intuition. My intuition is that this this sub kick doesn't need to be there. And if you do do if you do want it to, because it does add like a little bit of an extension onto the the tail of the kick. But if you're gonna do it, I would say really smash it in a compressor and so that the transient, because whenever I'm turning off this compressor and I play them together. And speak now if, if you're hearing it different, I just feel like it might not be necessary and I do that stuff all the time. Greetings from Nice, Heather, or greetings from Berlin back, Heather. Welcome. Andrew, can you post the Sound Toys link for that? Because that would be something that would be really useful for people that are looking for some sound sculpting things. I definitely endorse those plugins. So I think, I think that that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, another really fun thing that you can do with a track like this is you can get, because it's such a slow burning track, you can get a little bit more creative with just like start messing around with cutting and pasting stuff. Um, so, uh, I don't want to do that, but yeah, just take this. Let's cut the time. Now we're at a minute there. And let's just see what, Let's just see what happens if we insert, uh, we can insert silence here. Du, 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 du. Insert silence. And then, boom. 
So let's see what happens if we have this synth pad open up for a little bit. So something like that. Uh, and another thing, when you, uh, another thing I would really encourage you to do, thanks Drew. Um, another thing I would encourage you to do with tracks that have so much space like this, really turn loose on the volume automations or some kind of automations. Like here, I wanna, I wanna have this, uh, I want to be able to turn this up. So something like that, and we can punch that out. But play around, you've got so much space and you've got a pretty long breakdown. I, I'm, I think the long breakdown can go with the feel of the track, but I think that it could also be shorter. And that's just gonna come down to a matter of preference. But what I would do, if you can hear, I automated some volume there. I didn't touch anything else. I didn't add any, um, what's up Derek? How you doing? didn't add anything, didn't do anything. I just touched the volume feathers. And obviously that's gonna be a rough sketch so it gets a little bit too hot there. But let's even say if I, if I kept this going and I just had, let's see what happens if I go here. And this is what I love about motorized faders. So I, I kind of screwed it up, but that's the nice thing about motorized faders is you can re you can like revisit and just keep punching it back in. So. something like this like play around with the volumes and I'm not gonna be able to do it right while I'm while I'm having this but you've got the one of the great things about tracks like this is you've got so much space and so much headroom to where you can have you can really push certain sounds that like if it's a really busy track if you start really pushing one sound it could very well be crowding out the next sound and you don't have that luxury. Like the next track uh, from, if I'm saying his name right, Abmal, it's a really, really heavy and really busy track. And so you, if, if you have, um, how do I say it? If, if you have so many elements going, you don't have as much headroom. But with this track, you can just, you can really have it almost be where that dub chord gets almost too loud for a br brief moment and then and then it can go back to the same okay so i hope that that makes sense and i hope that the suggestions are are useful feel free to ask questions as we're going i'm going to load up the next the next track great work on this track jamie and i'll save the edit too and now we've got the next one. Um, Derek, I do have music on Spotify. There's Bandcamp as well if you're into actually, uh, yeah. There's, there's some of my music's on Spotify. There's, uh, if someone wants to post some links for Derek, that would be cool. Uh, Shannon, good to see you. 
How are you doing? Um, okay, so let's get this. And this was missing to Obmol. This was missing like a few elements, but I think that we can get the gist of the of the tracks. Okay. And the question from Obmol as this session is loading. If I can find it, if I can find it. Some tracks, oh, this is, what do I do? Keep frozen. Operator noise, complete some missing free samples. Hmm. Well, it doesn't sound like it's gonna give me a choice. So, what are we, okay. So we're missing lots of plugins, Q2, Timeless, Fab Filter, Timeless, da, 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 da. okay. I don't know why there's something, something is in the background that's not letting me, okay. Uh, all right. Let's see if it's uh, if we're anywhere near the the right sound with this. First, I'm going to search for these sample process freeze. The weird thing is, is that the, in this session we've got all the frozen frozen tracks and whatnot here. So, I'm not sure what we've got. Uh, audio 12, let's just do this automatic search here. See what it finds. House acapella. Here, let's drag this one in. Still missing tracks, but I think that for the sake of what's what the discussion is, that we'll be able to we'll be able to deal with this. So I'm going to let this track play for just a minute. Hi Kyle, Daniel here, hope all is safe and sound. I've been working on this track sporadically for a long period of time, and in my eyes most of it's done, but I feel the low end, roughly 350 hertz and below, uh, could be brought out more. Do you know how you can make it seem more present in the mix as it doesn't quite, uh, doesn't sound quite as nice when comparing off different speakers? Um, okay. Here's the things that I saw when I kind of took a glance over this. Uh, first off, I'm better than my middle school oh, mustache. I want to give wait. you a few updates. First, I will be okay. <laughs> first thing I saw is this. So it, it, I can actually I can relate and identify with this process where it ends up you end up getting it when you said that I've been 
let me see what the exact wording was. He said something of the effect of, I've been working on this track off and on sporadically for a long period of time. And it feels like there's, if I look at this effects chain, it almost feels to me like every time you revisit this track, you add more effects on it. And so what I would encourage you to do, and, and something, something that's, that's always really hard, and it's hard for me, and it's, uh, it's definitely missing some sounds. There's, there's stuff that's not copying over, and I don't know, there's a lot of frozen, frozen material that's n not copied. So yeah, we're just working with, with what we've got. But um, something that I would always say is when, when you get emotionally invested in a track, we tend to like look at each track of like, okay, here's this, uh, here's this sound and uh, it's, I've been working on this sound for two or three hours. So deleting it would effectively mean that I, you know, I don't know what to do if I delete this because that means two or three hours down the drain. And I, I would encourage you to not look at it that way because you're, I mean, it's basically the old adage of there's no such thing as a failed experiment. If you work on something for two or three hours and it somehow sounds worse, which isn't uncommon, then you figured out a lot about what not to do. So let's, let's just look at this effects chain. And my intuition is you're going to be a lot better instead of trying to sculpt the sound on top of the existing effects chain. Like you've got here and, and don't, don't be, uh, don't be bothered by these words. I'm not like tearing it apart or anything. Um, so on the first, on the first chain you've got, and this is on the, the kick, the kick one, you have an audio effect rack and the saturator is on chain one and then there's a reverb and then a saturator and then a amplifier and those are kind of doing similar things and then there's like a EQ that's turned off and then there's another chain here and it's got another saturator another saturator um, and all of that. So maybe just walk me through and, and there's nothing, there's no wrong answer and I, I'm not putting you on the spot, but what was your, was, were you just kind of putting stuff on and seeing what happened or did you have an idea in mind of what you were trying to do or was there something, were, was this happening were all of these chains and layers being formed with each time when you were trying to improve the sound? And I'm going to play it again while you're answering that question. I'm going to listen some more. So I had added this EQ first off. And I'm gonna give one more look on these on these frozen parts.
definitely got carried away with the processing. Yes, you're right. I think I came back to the track so many times and just didn't have the same impact, so I tried to bring out the kick more. There's quite a lot of the track missing in it seems, so, which is a shame. Yeah, somehow these frozen tracks, all of the samples are offline, and there's nothing in the folder that you sent me that has the, like, I've got all the frozen sounds here, but there's nothing, nothing there, so. But, I kind of, I kind of like whatever, whatever, I think I listened to the original version on SoundCloud, but the, the, the reduced version actually doesn't stand out to me as incomplete. So that might be another thing worth considering, but that's all down to personal taste. Um, okay, so let's get to work on this, this bass part. First thing I would do, um, it's, it's kind of like having long hair and going into the, to the, to a really good hairstylist. I'm not a really good hairstylist and I'm not a really good mixing engineer, but so that's not what I'm saying with this, but it's like when you go into the hairstylist and you say, I'm tired, I'm tired of my long hair, do something like that first cut, no matter how amazing the hair looks afterwards, that first cut's going to be really scary. So let's just, let's just start deleting shit. So let's just start seeing, okay, what's this? Compressor's not doing much, so it's changing the volume a little bit. So that's, that's what it's doing there. Um, this limiter isn't, nothing's hitting this limiter. So you're fine to delete that. Um, see what this is. Okay. Um, on this chain, it seems like, I think I turned that off originally. So if, if that was on, that reverb already, you're, you've got the saturator on, you've got all this stuff. Uh, and at some point, I think you turned it into mono, which was good. But that, this is a, this is a example of something that sounds good, like in headphones or on speakers sometimes. It, it, it gives an excitement to it, but it doesn't always translate to uh, to a sound uh, a big sound system. If you listen on small speakers, this sounds way crazier, right? But once it once it starts translating, then it's not going to be the same. But let's see if we can let's see if we can carve something out of this. So you still have that sound there. But let's just, let's listen to the whole kick there. Okay, this, this one's gonna bother me because this one is, where, oh, it's, it's like chain to the kick. So you've got kind of like a, a little bit of like a Brooklyn style compression here or something. But uh, it's this one. So look how much look how much energy is being taken up here. There's it's like huge with the low end. And that is crowding a lot of space in your mix. So let's just turn this on. And if you want still that sound, that kind of galloping sound, then you still have the galloping sound. But now you've, now you've freed up tons of space with the, uh, with the main kick.
so even even this, I feel like, could say the same thing as the, with this kick drum right over it. And maybe, maybe the, for me, this, this type of, the value of this kick in anything is going to be like, let's see. So the thing that I'm hearing on this sound is this little thing going up here. So you can actually free up all that bass. You can give this thing a giant haircut and still have the same effect. I would even consider moving this out of the drum bus because once you roll it off that much, it's not even part of the drums. It's not even part of the the, the kick drum it's more like it's this is more like a percussion element at this point okay and let me just reiterate i haven't really added any processing i have just taken away processing um and again this the Mixing is part is partly a science and it's partly a creative process. So there might be things that I would do that you might be thinking, okay, I, I don't like how that sounds. I think it actually sounds better the way I did it. And the point of this is is not to make it sound objectively better. It's to make it um it's to make it be so that you get in this mindset when like, I, I think it's actually really cool. Whenever I, whenever I pulled up this session, I'm like, dang, what's, what's going on here? You know? And I was like studying what, what you were doing. And I was like, okay, this is cra crazy. Like the routings and stuff of like so many layers and, I really have had a good look at at what was going on and I think that the the creative process it's really important to not think too critically about the creative process. But then when it gets to the mixing process and I mean those two can can overlap quite a bit, but when it gets to the mixing process really start thinking about what you're trying to achieve and at every step at every step like do something take a chance with that thing that you do and assess at each step in the mixing process does it make it does this make the sound better or does it make it worse or maybe a more subjective way would be does it does do i like the way it sounds better or less by adding this because if you if you get too into this rhythm of oh that doesn't sound better so let's let's add something else then you can end up with a lot of mud and 12 different options as to what that mud could be coming from and then you have to kind of go back anyway so so throw on something like for example i'm not i'm not a multi-band compression expert i've never been able to really achieve really good results with multi-band compression so uh, i'll put it on i still try it and I ask myself, does this, does this help the track or does this hinder the track? And if it, if it hinders it, uh, then, then yeah, yeah. And Andrew, I agree, you should just go for it on the creative process. Um, and then on the mixing process, that's like, because normally think about the creative process in most music, the creative process and the mixing process are so separate they're done in different buildings you know you have you might have a, an album recorded in if you're talking like rock music or pop music it might be recorded in la or new york 
and then it might be mixed in uh, Nashville and then mastered back in LA or New York or something. So you, you could feasibly have three different parts of the track done in three different by three different people in three different studios. And so because a lot of the techno and house and that type of stuff is a lot more do it yourself, then you end up, it becomes important to, to put on a different hat because you have to be, if, if you're doing your own mixing, you have to wear two different hats. And the advantage of people that don't do their own mixing is it just has two separate sets of ears. And so when you're creating, you can just go for it. And then the mixing person can come in and change things up or whatever. So uh, we're, it's, it's cool that we can do it all ourselves, but it's important to, to kind of take on those roles of like viewing our own. It's hard to view your own piece of work in a different light and but try to do that. Try to try to create a different mindset when you're mixing the track than when you're creating the track. And yeah, so I really think like when I mute this, when I mute this part, which is the reverb on the kick, not hearing that big of a difference and I'm not hearing that big of an improvement when it's on so my gut is telling me just to just to cut it out just to cut it out and let's see what this one's doing So what do we have here? Are we are we running like some kind of Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if we've got are we, are we routing something into Feels like there's a lot more being routed than what I'm hearing in this this bus. So see what we've got and I gonna do pre mixer let's see Let's just start, let's start carving, let's start rolling this off. And see. Let's see what it's doing here. Uh, let's get this down. And let's turn this to RMS. So, so a thing to consider is like, I'm rolling this back to like 18 Hertz. You don't need that stuff.
So I would say play around with this part because anything, anything behind this mark, like I'm at 42 Hertz, anything down here is taking up a lot of energy that you're never going to hear. And a lot of times you're never even going to feel. So you can really get, I don't know, it always needs more cowbells, but this isn't my own track. So I don't have the authority to add more cowbells. It would be a copyright infringement. So now you've got a lot more headroom to play around with, and then you can start carving stuff out. And what I would do is, it, it, like on this, maybe I got a little too surgical. And then you can start reintroducing stuff back into it. Like maybe I would put a 12 dB filter on that. So it's not completely taken out that rumble. Something you can do like with the main kick. Let's do the same thing here. So, so I've actually, I've actually reduced the energy on this track, on this kick. The overall amount of bandwidth that this is taking up right now is a lot more than it is right there. But it, if you hear the AB comparison, then it, then in my opinion, the, the EQ version sounds stronger. And the reason why is because all that energy you're, you're saving by rolling off these sub frequencies that no one's gonna hear anyway, you can give, you can find that fundamental frequency of your kick and give it a little bump there. And you're actually, let's, let's look at the headroom here. So I'm at six, negative six dB is how high it's hitting. Okay. Now let's see what I'm doing here. I'm actually, I'm actually reducing the sound on the meters by a quarter of a dB by adding that EQ. And I'm making the, the, I'm making the focus of the sound where it counts the most. Does that make sense? So, yeah, that would be that would be the thing that I I would recommend for you. And I'm really sorry if there's if there's n not all the sounds. There's there's a lot of stuff going on, and it just seemed like the I should have really had you flatten everything but it just didn't copy over for some reason so really sorry about that and but i think that i think that a lot of the problem frequencies that you had expressed are going to be down in this in this low range and if you can tame the low end especially on these really busy and heavy tracks if you can tame the low end then everything else becomes a lot easier I, a great example for me, uh, and he plays like super hard, so I'm not really necessarily even playing his stuff in my sets, but a person for this type of music that everybody that's into the hard type sound should really look to and study is this, um, I think he's from Serbia, and his name's uh, Skala Maria, I think is how you pronounce his name. He releases a lot on perk tracks and the music's almost gabber music, but it's so hard, but it's so sonically well engineered for being such a full busy track. Really study that, that guy's music and take notes of what, what's happening there and try to mimic what for this type of sound. If you can get the sonics, on a heavy track to sound like Scala Maria, and I think I'm pronouncing the name correctly, then, then you're off to a really good start.
So I'm going to save this as, and then um, if you have questions, I can revisit stuff and all that. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Daniel. And I'm going to go on to the next one. This one is from a newcomer. Uh, Piotr, as I understand, you are completely fresh with production. Is that, is that correct? Um, and you're coming from, uh, the first, I think you're coming from Poland, if I remember correctly. So we've got, um, the first, uh, the first guy that, who we did the track of was he's, if, let me get this correct, maybe from London, but lives in Australia or from Australia, but lived in London and is now back in Australia. Daniel, where are you from? What's your, tell us a little bit about yourself. I think you're in, um, in Berlin. Are you coming from Moscow? Okay. Okay. Cool. So we've got a, we've got a pretty broad, uh, representation here from all over the world. And I think the session you sent me was project for Kyle. <laughs> Feel free to name it your own name. I, I always say this one thing I'll say while I'm pulling this up is be sure when you're sending like as soon as you're letting a, a file or a track or a session go from your possession, make sure that it always has your name and all of the important information on. Sometimes I'll get demos from people and they're great. It's great music, but it's just completely generically labeled. So I can't ever actually get that stuff back. Uh, I can't give good feedback because I don't know. A lot of times I think people assume that they're sending you an email with an attachment or with a link, but a lot of times people are going through their emails and then they're downloading the music and then they're listening to the music in two separate points or sometimes you download it and then forget that it's even there for three months and uh, you pull it up and you say, wow, this is really cool. But then you don't have a way to get in touch with the person. And that's, that's a real tragedy. If you, if you spend all this time making music and then the, you're not able to get rewarded for the music you made, that's a, that's a major bummer. So be sure to, and, and when you go to like do, if you're doing like 320 MP3s, be sure the metadata is all right. Uh, AIFF files, you can actually have metadata that when, if someone converted that to an MP3, the metadata would transfer over. WAV files don't do that, so that's something else to consider. But um, here's, a, here's a track from Piotr, and Piotr, like as a new producer, you should really be happy with this track. Like, Keep going, keep pushing, keep improving, but this is a really good start. So you should be super happy Talk about this. I wish I could share, I wish I could play the first track I ever made. And I'll tell you that this track is so much better than the first track that I ever made. So the question that Piotr had, and maybe I'm just, I can hear you disintegrating while you talk to me. Maybe I'm just going deaf uh, from being in front of too many loudspeakers. But here's what here's what Piotr said for the talk to me vocal uh, vocal loop that starts from the beginning. I sampled a video uh, file for a movie. There is a little click that you can hear on the K and talk that bothers me a bit. Um, I tried EQing it, but I really couldn't get anywhere. Is there some other way to identify it and cut it from the audio file? Perhaps there is some cool way to distort it and uh, that would help. Also, any comments on the bass line and interaction of the kick. I tried to tune everything, use sidechain compression, and generally follow your advice. 
Also, it's my first ever track, so any kind of advice on arrangement would be uh, really extra valuable at this point. Okay. Um, first thing first, the talk to me, uh, and maybe, maybe it's because you're, you've been listening to it for so long. I hear it a little bit, a very, very small amount, but let's see, let's see what. Let's see. Okay. Talk to me. 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 Yeah. Um unfortunately Ableton does not currently have this feature unless I'm completely unaware of it. In a program like Pro Tools, you can actually go in and redraw the waveform, which is an amazing feature for things like this. Um, but yeah, for, for something like this, um, when, when you have the music playing, I mean, you kind of hear it, but it, it almost, in, in my, when I'm hearing it, it almost kind of sounds like it, it gives it a little bit of, character like it's almost like uh, something that's it gives it like a little bit of a almost raw feeling you know so yeah so I'm gonna play around something that I would something that I would say with with like vocals like this what I would encourage you to do is find ways to have this kind of modulate a little bit and let's see like let's see how we could how we could easily modulate it well, let's see let's just go with a little bit of reverb that can kind of come in and out it's a really basic trick but let's see we've got So that it's so that it's like not as constant, you know. And maybe, maybe even if we can get here, let's play around with this. Sometimes you can do like little edits here on this. Let's do this. Uh, because we're gonna need to have it come back. Let's get it to kind of go off. Something, something like really basic like this. You could, or you could really mangle it. And, and just, just do these little subtle things that are, that can chop it up a little bit where it doesn't need to be something really bombastic, but something that can kind of reset your subconscious to say, okay, this, because sometimes what I find if, if the track is always going on and don't be afraid just to just to have it drop out sometimes you could even have it you could even have it fade out in this um, I mean I, I I can't emphasize enough this is a really cool track for for just getting started and I think you should be really encouraged by this I wish I made music that sounded this like good for for a beginner you know um 
Um, the, the bass and the kick, actually. The bass and the kick are actually, I don't see any really glaring, glaring issues there. You could even have like, uh, for a little trick for the modulation. could have this volume kind of modulate just like even even if you just had it modulate it's sitting at nine negative nine db if you just had it modulate to eight from from that nine here and there then you could really get if you can modulate just almost everything in the track it just moves things so much better. So you're not even gonna, you're not even gonna really notice that. And you could even hit, uh, oh, you don't wanna do that. I always forget that Ableton 9 has different, different parameters for this. Okay, so we need this. So you could even like draw in different automations and just write it out as you're going along. Just little stuff like that. Uh, and the, the other question that you had was, tried to tune everything da, 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 by some arrangement. Um, yeah, the, the arrangement thing, and maybe a good exercise for this, would be just to listen. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Listen to this part. Talk to me. Talk to me. All by itself. Talk to me. And play with it to where it's kind of morphing in a noticeable way while you're while you're working with it. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. So let's see. So you don't want it to obviously go that crazy? Or maybe you do. Maybe maybe that's like something you want it to do. And you could You're going insane. I can hear you disintegrating while you talk to me. So let's just pull this up a little bit. And just have that, have this thing kind of build and morph and create tension with, with just creating, uh, varying it on that. So just clock the plus sign, click to record over the top. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Thank you. I always forget. I, I have the control surface in front of me and that's how I always am, am running it. So if I do the plus. So what he's basically saying is if you do the plus sign here. And then. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got the... Yeah, I couldn't get it to work because I'll, I've used the... Talk to me, talk to me, 
punch in there, but if I take this. Okay. I can hear you disintegrate. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. And this is gonna get way too loud. Talk to me. Talk to me. Maybe not. Talk to me. 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 But yeah, you can you can do so much with this track and you've got a lot of room to do it. In my opinion, it's funny coming, going from the previous track and like maybe cleaning up the previous track, I would say that this could actually have a little bit more grit to it. And you can do, do a, a couple different things with it. Uh, maybe just put like, play around with having a saturator on the, the drum bus. So you don't want it to be like too crazy. And I feel like the, we can get these the, on the mixing. I feel like these hi hats. I want them to be a little bit, a little bit stronger. Let's get the. Where is the? Where are the hi hats? So let's get let's get these up a little. So I would say that now you've got you've got a little bit more attitude in the drum sounds and you can always just play with the play with the dry wet. I wouldn't have it at 100. That's a little too aggressive. But what I do like Let's do this. I like that on the on the hi hats themselves. It's kind of nice. So that's that's something that you can that you can really do. Like you can just play around with it. Don't be afraid to give it, give some of the sounds like you, you've got a, a nice idea. You've obviously got a vision for what you want to do. What I would just recommend doing is just, uh, making, making the sounds kind of your own, giving, giving each sound like, I feel like this, this track could have like some more attitude. I guess is the way I would say. Uh, this, for example, let's see what we've got here. Like you could do something really simple, like put a, let's see what a flanger does on it. And someone's so happy out there that this has, this track has cowbell on it. So you've already won the key to someone's heart, but Or you could do something like uh, put a put a really simple delay on it, and just have the turn crank the delay down to have like B Z. Yeah. Play around with it. Play around with it. Uh, Ableton got distorted again. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up that track anyways, and I will be able to fix uh, the Ableton problem right now. I'm really frustrated with the, I mean, how frustrated can you be with a software that is completely free and as created a lot of opportunities for doing stuff like this. So I don't want to say I'm really frustrated with it because it's an open source free software and I'm going to make 
the best of it. Properties, we're gonna go back to this. Now let's, we'll try this one out. And I've got one more track. Do a little roll call. Uh, this is a track from Tom. Tom, are you still out there? Still out there like working all hours of the night? Uh, let's get this track up and running. Welcome, Piotr. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. That's really encouraging to hear such a such a new face in techno production actually really making progress. And that's a that's a great a great thing. So, yeah. Tom Eastwood, you're up, and we're gonna get this party started with Tom. Tom, uh, give a five a.m. bangers. <laughs> Let's give a little bit of insight. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And yeah, looks like we've got this track already going. Tell me this, Tom, did you want the ghost track uh, to be muted? Was it, um, was it doing like side chain? Was it side chaining something or was that intentional or did you want it on? Easty lad. So do we have do we have all the all the things going here from Manchester? Lived in London, currently in Melbourne. Okay, cool. Okay, so so Tom, you wanted the you wanted this track muted. Okay, cool. So. First things first. I, my instinct tell me to really push this kick. You've got a lot more space with this kick here. You've got a lot more space with kind of everything here because and, and the, the great thing that I've noticed about most of these tracks is every track kind of has had, from all the different ranges of techno, all of you who have submitted tracks have had a pretty good sense of like the sound spectrum, um, filling up that sound spectrum. Something that I, that part of me wants to do, I'm gonna duplicate this. Let me first ask what Tom, let me first check and see what Tom's uh, question was so that I don't get carried away with destroying his track, his, his little baby. Um, one of the four tunes I finished while in isolation mixed it down as something I'm in, inexperienced with, so acknowledge that it isn't where it needs to be. Um, I'm just starting to study that, so my question is more around keeping the track interesting. Happy with the, with the elements and also getting quite happy with my sound design. Can't help but feel that tracks don't have enough variation or maybe the arrangement is too rigid. Question is around on uh, making the track sound more fluid with the arrangement, not being so rigid or how to enhance the tracks variety if needed. Uh, would, this be an, would this be through drum variation changes or the lead sequence adding and subtracting notes and adding effects uh, to, onto the existing elements of a track? Echo on everyone else's comments and blah, 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 blah. Thank you for doing this. No problem. Okay. So let's get started. How do you, how do you make this interesting? 
So I bought that. Let's see what the what we've got here. And I've duplicated this because you can do a lot of stuff with duplicating. So let's uh, first let's see if we can pitch this down. That didn't work so well. So back to the drawing board on that. One thing that you don't that you don't necessarily need to do is that the the tracks don't always have to keep every element in it at all times. So like when I when I see this, I think. Um, I would make this, I want that to be louder, I want the hi-hat to be louder, and I want, let's get, I'll bring the, I'm going to bring the rim shot down a little bit more. or maybe filter it actually. I mean, something that you could really do is when you were asking about drum variations and you can do a lot with like copying the, the rim shot, for example. What I really want, I want this rim shot to still be higher in the mix. And I know that you said that, that the mixing you're, you're just learning about, but I think that in this track, because it's, it's kind of a, a cruising type track that you could actually really benefit from everything kind of standing out and every element coming in. So maybe do something like, okay. See what happens if you take this, let's just duplicate this right here. And then right here, copy, Let's do that and let me make sure that this was okay. So take that. Let's just go up. And you can have, I'd filter this so that it doesn't start, so it doesn't take away the energy. And just little, little fills, like, I mean, uh, Truncate is the master of having, of basically keeping a kind of five minute loop super interesting. That would be someone that I would, uh, yeah, you did have, you do have a filter envelope on it. 
Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I just did a little work around for it. Oops. But I, I don't think that this track needs, uh, again, anything really super dramatic. I think that the elements are there. I think that a track like this can really benefit from solid mixing because it's like a very reduced and stripped down track. And what you could always do if you if you're if you start finding that this drum doesn't doesn't quite add up can always duplicate this drum. And this is, uh, I wouldn't, in this case, I'm gonna just insert a MIDI track there. And I'm gonna just use a really basic, let's take a 909 sound that everybody would have access to i mean you can get there's 909 sounds until you're blue in the face so let's drag that in so if you've got this really strained sound there then maybe have like a a different 909 or a punchier kick which is the 909 come in underneath Now we've got why won't this play? I need to figure out. Oh, that's what I need to do. Oh, the pressure. So, so I notice every mistake that I do, and I make mistakes all the time in the studio on my own, but. So you'd be able to mix these two. So if you wanted this kind of strain sound right here, you could even like roll that off because you've got uh, Okay, you've got the envelope on, on that. You could roll this a bit higher. And then you could really open up this, this. And that's gonna give like, you still have the, the body of, or like the tonality of this kick. But then you've got a, a a more dry kick laying underneath it. Uh, that's just an idea that I would that I would say for that. Something that you can really do. I want to see what you've got going on in your return tracks. Um, okay, first thing uh, I would suggest: return tracks. Use the. I would encourage you to put the sound all the way dry wet or all the way wet on these so for now I'm gonna restore the kick back to your original form and I just need to remember what we had going here But yeah, no, let's keep, let's keep this kick, uh, let's keep this kick on here. Okay. And do we have hi-hats on, we, are, is the, are the drums flattened on this? I forget. Yeah, I think they are. 
So I'm gonna just EQ it to bring out this hi-hat because I think it could, could give it a lot of energy. Supposed to be in Japan buying a 909, like a, an old school 909. Kyle Douglas, what's up? Okay. Something else, uh, let's go back to the, let's go back to the effects sins. So again, I want to emphasize, put on the dry wet all the way up on these. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you've already got like ways that you can play around with this. Our, our Purdue University days, Purdue Beat Society. <laughs> convolution reverb I've seen this a couple times on but but when you're doing when you're doing uh, return tracks and I think somebody brought it to my attention on one of my templates I had accidentally forgotten to turn up the dry wet and so I apologize and repent if I had confused people by doing the 50 because if you've got 50 50 on a return track think about what you're doing like you're Let's just do an example here. So we've got this. Uh, kick bird. So half of what you're doing is just adding volume and you're adding reverb. So you'd be better if you just had the reverb all the way up. So this would be something if you've got like a, let's see if you've got a delay going on anywhere. Uh, do you have a delay? The black hole reverb, kick verb. Yeah, if you added a delay on this, if the space has a little bit of delay going, maybe open this up a little bit. Just doing that's all just doing stuff with the effect chain that you've already that you already had set up 
there's nothing there's nothing more than that i changed i changed the mixing of the of some of the elements because i thought some of the elements were not sitting in the right place and and for a track like this i think it's super important to like really be cognizant of which elements you want to be the focal point because if if you these type of tracks can sound and i mean to be honest any type of track can sound really flat if you don't make an executive decision on which elements to really crank up and which elements to kind of push to the back um it's yeah i mean there's so many different analogies but i think that you could understand why like if everybody in an orchestra is pe playing at the same at the same volume it's just going to sound like mud whereas you need parts to kind of stand out and and everybody every part needs their spot so now i can bring that down Okay. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, Tom, the, the, the elements are there. The elements are there already on this track. And you just need to, to be a little bit more definitive with those elements. Make them do crazier stuff. And don't, also don't forget, you can automate the return tracks too. I think that sometimes, sometimes that gets a little bit lost. So you've got, let's turn this up. I don't know if anything's running through it right now. Just be careful when you're playing with the delay. Either be ready to throw your headphones off or um, be ready to turn your speakers off because the, the feedback on delays can get really out of control really fast. Actually, if you know the drum and bass duo Ed Rush and Optical from back in the day, they like they kind of semi-retired years ago because they got horrible hearing damage from a studio accident. It wasn't from DJing. I mean, that's, that's cranking right there. That's cranking the bass into... into a space reverb and a, a delay that you've got set up. So... Sometimes it just takes a second set of ears to kind of step back and, and hear, hear what's going on and say, oh, I'd really like to, to see this kind of stand out more in a track. And I mean, and I would also say, converse to that, is don't give too many people uh, input into your tracks because it can sometimes people if you send out if you're working on a track and then you send out to that track to 10 different people and you don't ask a direct question about it you're gonna get if you've got 10 elements you're gonna get 10 different answers saying oh you need to delete this element or someone's like oh you need to turn up this element you need to turn it down you're going to get so much confusion added into it so a lot of it's about just familiarizing yourself with what needs to be done and what your vision is as a producer uh because look if it if somebody asks me like about there's so much subjectivity in music and there's limitations to what advice someone can give you on the the creative process but it's more about getting it's it's about a producer's role is like maximizing what an artist is trying to say 
you know, and expounding upon that. I always remember like Butch Vig, there was this interview and Butch Vig, for those who don't know, produced Nirvana's Nevermind. And Kurt Cobain and Nirvana were in the studio and Butch Vig really wanted to use a technique called double backing vocals. And Kurt Cobain was like, no, hell no, and no way. That's cheating. It's not my voice. It's not anything. And Butch Vig knew that Kurt Cobain kind of idolized John Lennon. And he said, you know, Kurt, John Lennon's voice used double back, double, double backed vocals. And Kurt was like, okay, let's do it. And sometimes it's about, it was still Kurt Cobain's voice. It was just somebody else coming in and saying, Kurt, your voice can sound so much better if you do this. And then convincing that person that that's what needs to happen. And that, like I said, techno and underground and like independent music, a lot of times is a lot more do it yourself. So we don't always have the luxury of having like someone sitting in a producer chair that's like giving advice on that, that type of insight. So yeah, yeah, we're, it's a, it can be a struggle to like put on a different hat and look at it from a different vantage point when it's your own uh, music, but I'd encourage everybody to do it. I hope this wasn't, for those of you who, uh, it's, this was like very much a new format for this uh, live stream where I wanted to maybe talk about an individual's track in a way that hopefully was useful to other people that were watching. Um, and it was a nice little experiment. And I'm sure that we'll revisit something down the road, uh, something along these lines, but I enjoyed it and I hope that you did too. And I'm going to be heading over to Twitch right now and I'm just going to be working on uh, music and that's the place where I talk a lot more nonsense and get a lot more off topic. I'm putting a link down, down in the, in the comments and feel free to head over there. I'm probably going to be hopping on, I got to take a little break and then probably in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes I should be popping on there. And so that'll be kind of the little after party. Does anybody have any questions before I sign off here? Stick around for just a second or for a minute. Questions, questions. Glad it was, Piotr. Just remember me when you win your first Grammy. <laughs> when you become a techno superstar. Remember, remember us little people. Welcome, Tom. Same goes for you. Welcome, Drew. I hope you all join over on Twitch. It's a fun, it's a, Twitch is, for those who don't know Twitch, it's a fun platform that I feel like um, is, it's kind of taps into the personality that I feel like sometimes the seriousness of techno has push people to hide that part of their personality in the, in the closet. And I, I really enjoy it. It's just a, talking a lot of nonsense, working on the studio, uh, often swearing at myself and at the computer and all that. So yeah, hope you join. And, um, yeah, Drew, uh, I, I think I will. I, I, this is like kind of the first experiment of this type of format. And I think that I'll end up doing it again. I've got to figure out a, a better system. I think really the answer is going to be to 
have the submissions be because I feel bad for um, Daniel. Uh, he submitted a track and all the stuff didn't copy over. And th those type of things are going to happen, but we, I think we made the best of it and we'll f I'll f hopefully figure out a better system where it might be just multi-tracks and then we can talk about multi-tracks and midi-tracks or something like this. So yeah, yeah, but I definitely want to explore it again. So, and I think I said, yeah, everybody, I enjoyed the time. And I will see you over on Twitch here in just a little bit. Much love.